welcome you to the Lighthouse in Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania, with founders and pastors Ken and Wilda Brown. And now, let's go into the service already in progress. As we get ready for the Word of God tonight, I'm going to give it to you in three parts so you'll understand. Uh, it's in a common scripture, I think, uh, Ezekiel 43. Ezekiel 43, and I'm actually going to start in 4215. 42 of Ezekiel, 4215. And uh, I'll tell you ahead of time what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, he's having a vision of the glory of the Lord coming back to the temple of God. And all through in the beginning, he had at the river Chibar, Chabar, uh, he had a vision of the glory of the Lord, but then the glory of the Lord departed because uh, of the rebelliousness of the people. And as they rebelled, the glory of the Lord left the house, left the altar, left through the east gate, uh, went up the mountain, and uh, it was no more. And then for several chapters, uh, Ezekiel sees about the judgment and so forth, uh, and then the angel of the Lord appears, and uh, for about three chapters, he measures everything, uh, coming down from the mountain, coming into the east gate, uh, coming into the port portico, uh, coming into the uh, porch area, uh, coming into the outer court, the inner court, and even to the altar, and measures the altar. Uh, and uh, as he is doing that, we as a church, and that was the vision he was having, the second part of that vision is way out in the millennium. When Jesus Christ comes, uh, the second aspect of that vision that he's having, uh, it was for then because Solomon's temple, which was a beautiful temple, but the people got so used to the glory uh, and uh, so used to God uh, that they forsook him and went their own ways. And so the glory departed even from the beautiful temple, and the temple was destroyed. You know that uh, but it's going to come back during the millennial time when Jesus Christ comes back again. How many of you know he's coming back? And so the second aspect that we're talking about tonight uh, is that out here in the millennial reign with Christ, uh, the temple is going to be restored once again. Uh, Jesus Christ will be in the midst. Uh, and uh, then the third aspect is uh, I'm going to put it into the middle for you and I for right now. So what was in the given by vision in the past for that time and that season, what is for the future season is way out there. So I'm going to bring this passage of Scripture to where we are right now and where it is a season of the glory of the Lord. And so when I look here in chapter 42 of Ezekiel and verse 15, now when he had finished measuring the inner temple area, he brought me forth toward the gate which faces east and measured it. And then he goes on and talks about the measuring there. But I wanted you to see in verse 15, when he had finished measuring the inner temple. And why I'm bringing that, uh, God has, uh, and, and now we're coming to where we are right now, God has put a plumb line of righteousness and truth. The enemy has propagated lies and deception and has come against the church. And the church, even the people, have believed the deceptions and the lies of the enemy. And that is what is going on. But God has dropped the plumb line. And the plumb line is not a measurement, but it is that everything is going to be level and straightened out. And so what God has done it back there when the temple was going to be rebuilt, the glory of the Lord coming back, uh, and in the millennial, Jesus Christ is going to be the plumb line. So right now, he has sent the Holy Spirit uh, to be our plumb line. I don't know if you know what a plumb line is. A plumb line will come down and, and you can... Uh, uh, figure that it's going to be level, it's going to be straight, uh, it's not going to be a crooked church, uh, it's not going to be out of alignment. Uh, God is sending an alignment from heaven to earth, uh, and it is his plumb line. Everybody say plumb line. Plumb line, and the plumb line is uh, that there is going to be a restoration in the body of Jesus Christ uh, of the righteousness uh, and the holiness uh, and the love of God. 
Not the love of this world and not the love of pleasure, not the love of money, uh, not the love of uh, things, uh, not the love of uh, uh, vehicles and things like that, uh, but the pure, holy love of God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and all thy spirit. Uh, and so the plumb line, and this is new to you tonight, uh, the plumb line has been dropped from heaven to earth. Heaven has kissed the earth. There is an alignment that is coming from heaven to earth to the body of Jesus Christ. Say, we are the body of Jesus Christ. So when we're talking about the temple, we can talk about the past. We can talk about the future. But tonight we're going to talk about the now of the temple. How many of you know that the scripture says, Know ye not, know you not, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so I'm going to refer to that tonight, that scripture out of the New Covenant. So under the New Covenant, we are the temple. And so when he had finished measuring the temple, when he had finished and it started way up on the mountain and came down through the valley and through the hills and came to the outside of the uh, temple and he measured outside of the temple and uh, then he came to the door and came through the east uh, door and measured it. Uh, it was a two-leaved door. Uh, and as he came through uh, uh, and measured uh, the outer court uh, and then the inner court uh, and then he came to the Holy of Holies, uh, which is the inner court, uh, and then he came to the altar and he spent some time uh, measuring and making sure that everything at the altar, the altar uh, is for sinners to come. The altar uh, is for those who are hurting to come. The altar is for the sick to come. The altar is the place uh, where we come into uh, the very presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, when he finished measuring, uh, what I am receiving from the Holy Spirit uh, prophetically uh, and by the Word of God is that everything that God has measured has been measured. The plumb line has been dropped. It is alignment coming from heaven to earth. Alignment coming not only from heaven to earth, but there is an alignment coming back to the body of Jesus Christ. We're going to get in alignment with the will of God where we seek him and not the things of this world. Where we seek him and not the pleasures of this world. Oh, there are many churches that are having church uh, at this time, even uh, now, uh, but they're partying. Uh, they're not worried about Jesus. They're not worried about honoring our Heavenly Father. They're not worried uh, uh, about allowing the Holy Spirit to move. Uh, they have not received the plumb line, but I'm going to tell you, uh, you as a body here, uh, the plumb line has been dropped into this sanctuary, uh, and God is setting alignment right uh, in the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, and I'm going to go one step further, uh, and this is mine from the Scripture. I'm interpreting this, uh, and by revelation, uh, and I'm saying that God is now bringing an alignment to our own individual, individual people. You as an individual, God is dropping the plumb line into your heart and your spirit. Uh, he knows uh, whether you have been seeking him. He knows uh, whether you have been doing the pleasure of this world. The scripture says, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be renewed uh, by the renewing of your mind. Uh, be you changed. Uh, and so God is now dropping the plumb line. Uh, and that, that's where we're beginning tonight. And so I'm going to take the middle session and... Uh, talk mainly about that, even though we could go back and talk about the, the temple there and his. Uh, and I put down as a title here tonight, uh, there is a new vision coming to the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's coming through alignment with his word, coming through alignment with his will, coming through alignment with obedience uh, to what God would have us to do. Uh, so look at 43 and 1, and it says, afterward. Uh, and I said, now... I questioned everything, and I said, afterward what? Uh, after everything has been measured, uh, after the prophetic word says uh, that alignment heaven has kissed earth, uh, after uh, the alignment has come and the body of Christ is being measured by the plumb line uh, of Jesus Christ, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, and the Father, uh, and uh, the plumb line has come, and now it's coming individually, because as I 
read the prophecy time and time again, and I keep reading it over uh, because the alignment is coming from heaven to earth. Heaven has kissed earth. Uh, there is something coming from heaven to earth, uh, and it is the righteousness and the pureness and the holiness of Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's touching the body, touching the body. Now, there are many, uh, and even in the church, uh, that they would not allow the plumb line uh, to be their thing. And so uh, they are doing things. People, what we need, we need a revival. We need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need to honor our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, uh, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so when we're looking at this, it says afterwards. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying after the alignment has been set by God Almighty, Jesus Christ is really the plumb line that has come uh, and he is now in the midst of his church, and I'll show it to you in the Word of God here in a few moments. Uh, Jesus is the plumb line. And so when we depend upon him, so it says, Afterward, the uh, angel, the man, or the angel, uh, brought me to the gate. Uh, what is a gate? Uh, a gate is an opening to something new. And so at the top of my Bible, I wrote, uh, God is bringing forth uh, a new vision of his glory to the body of Jesus Christ. It's coming from heaven to earth. It's coming from earth and going this direction, uh, outward. And then it's coming individually to each one of us. And so as we get a new vision, everybody say, I'm going to get a new vision tonight. Because he brought me to the gate, and the gate is that which opens up new things. When you come to the gate, uh, you're getting ready to step across the threshold uh, and step into uh, that which God has called us in this last day and this hour. Uh, we got to forget about the politician. We got to put them aside. Uh, we got to put the devil aside. He's already powers and principalities. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. Uh, they have already been spoiled by the blood of Jesus Christ uh, and they are under his feet. Uh, we got to honor the plumb line that is in the house. We got to honor Jesus Christ. We got to lift up uh, through the Holy Spirit. Uh, we got to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We sing that little chorus, uh, lift Jesus higher. Everybody say, lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. I'm not going to sing tonight because uh, my wife was uh, copying me there and she sung about three or four songs this morning. And uh, so I'm not going to sing tonight. Well, I, I shouldn't have said that because I probably will. But we want to lift Jesus higher in this house. We want to lift him up. Uh, we want to lift him up before the world. His name is going to be upon the lips of many people. Even sinners are going to be saying the name of Jesus Christ. Those who have criticized him and come against him, they are going to be saying the name of Jesus. They may be saying it derogatory, but the name of Jesus is going to be heard once again. The plumb line has come to the house of God, and now the plumb line is coming to individuals in this house. He brought me to the gate and that is the opening. The gates of heaven are now open. There is an opening of the heavens toward a people who will worship him. And the gates of heaven are open even to those who would criticize and come against and say, I don't believe in that Jesus. I don't believe in that religion because God is going to bring his Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God. Those who have criticized and those who have uh, named the name of Jesus derogatorily, if that's a word. They have come against Jesus. Uh, they are going to change, uh, and they're going to be coming to Jesus Christ. We saw this morning uh, in a transformation of a young man uh, who was caught up into drugs and so forth uh, and now is worshiping Jesus Christ. Uh, and Pastor Wilder called him out, uh, and we prayed over him. Uh, God is doing new things, uh, and he's going to take you from where you are. Some of you, you say, well, I'm not in drugs. I'm not in alcohol. I'm not uh, in this. Uh, some of you aren't in anything. I said, some of you aren't in anything. You need to get ready because the move is on, brother. The move is on, sister. God is moving. I hear the sound of the rustle in the mulberry trees, and the armies of the Lord are rising up. The armies of the Lord are going to be gathering together. The armies of the Lord are going to be shod with the gospel of the preparation of peace. They're going to have the helmet of salvation. They're going to have the breastplate of righteousness. They're going to have the belt of truth, and they're going to go forward towards the 
enemy camp and take back what the enemy has stolen from you. What the enemy has stolen, he owes you seven times the scripture or seven times what he took away from you. So get ready to receive. So the measuring is finished. Now, what do we expect? Well, in verse 2 it says, And behold, the measuring is done, the plumb line has been set, the, the alignment is already working, and now behold, everybody say behold, something's going to happen. The glory of the God of Israel came from the east. His voice was like the sound of many waters. The earth shone with his glory. And he gives us several references there, Revelation 1, 15 and 14, 2, and I looked those up, and it says his voice when he speaks, it's like the voice uh, of many waters, uh, and many waters, uh, and uh, the waters are coming uh, wave after wave after wave. Uh, the glory of the Lord is coming into the house, uh, and there's going to be a wave of glory, uh, and then there's going to be another wave of glory, uh, and then there's going to be another wave of glory, and another wave, another wave. Somebody say another wave. Uh, let the glory come. And when I looked up that word, and that word is a word, it is a weighty word. It is kabod, the glory of the Lord. And I looked this word up in Strong's, and that word kabod, the word glory here, and the glory, everybody shout, the glory of the God of Israel is coming into this house. And I saw something with the glory of the Lord that God himself will speak. When the glory comes down, his voice was like the sound. There is a sound when the glory comes down. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. When God sent his, through Jesus Christ, sent the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, there was a sound, there was a voice, there was a wind, there, there was a sight, and God is going to do it once again. His voice is like many waters, and it's going to rumble through the house. And I, I just keep seeing a wave after a wave after a wave. How many waves is it until you get to that good wave? Is it seven? Nobody knows? Okay. I'm not going to ask that question and uh, scratch that. Okay. When I see this, I see the first one that says, Behold. Everybody say, Behold. The glory of the Lord is coming to the house where we live, where we eat, where we walk, where we drive our cars to the hills and the valleys, to the ravines, to the brooks, to the rivers, to the mountains, to me. The glory is coming to me. The glory is coming upon me. The glory uh, of the glory of the Lord, uh, the kabod, the, the, well, what is that kabod? I looked it up in the dictionary, and according to uh, uh, Strong's, uh, uh, the glory here uh, means uh, an abounding splendor. It means uh, magnificent. Uh, God is sending his anointing, uh, and it's coming, and the glory of the Lord uh, is going to be in this house. Uh, several, uh, maybe a month ago or so, uh, Pastor Cindy was preaching, and she had uh, a song put on, uh, let the glory fall in this place, uh, and let it go from here to the nations. Uh, and we sang it a second time uh, later on, uh, but we didn't get a hold of it. Uh, but now I'm telling you tonight, uh, I said, uh, Lord, what am I doing? I don't have anything for this people. And these people are faithful. They're here tonight. I named you before you got here. There's a lot of people who stayed home tonight. A lot of people are watching that crazy football game. And then they're getting all depressed. And they got to quit watching Pittsburgh. You get more depression. I flipped it on, saw they were losing, I flipped it off. I flipped it on later, saw they were losing really bad, I turned it off. I don't think they won, did they? Huh? Well, they lost. I didn't get depressed about it. I'm not depressed about their losing, but I'm depressed because some Christians are losing. 
They're going the way of the world. They're going the way of things. Uh, Even churches are going the way of things. Uh, They're going the way of partying. Uh, They're going the way of having this event and that event. Uh, Why don't we have an event where we have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, uh, where the glory of God comes down in the house, uh, and the people of God are filled with his glory and his praise and his honor. Uh, And so when I'm looking at this, I see uh, that the glory of the Lord came uh, into the holy temple Uh, The glory of the God of Israel, verse 2, came from the east. uh, And in that glory, uh, God began to speak uh, to his people. His voice, uh, he spoke. Uh, When the glory comes, uh, God will speak. Uh, Oh, the glory uh, of his presence. Uh, We, your people, uh, we give you reverence. Uh, So come, Holy Spirit. Uh, come glory of God Uh, stand up uh, and somebody stand up and shout uh, I need the glory Uh, come glory of God Uh, I want the kabod I want the glory uh, to fill the temple I want the glory uh, to fill every uh, uh, chair Uh, I want the glory of the Lord to fill that gymnasium Uh, I want the glory of the Lord uh, to fill me Uh, Lord send your glory Uh, let the glory uh, let the glory shout it out let the glory God is already speaking, and he's listening while he's speaking. He's saying, I want to send you the glory, but nobody's asking. Is anybody asking? I want to see the glory. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, Oh, the glory uh, of your presence. Uh, And he brought me to that gate, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel. His voice came in the glory. There was a sound like many waters in the glory. And the earth shone with his glory. And the glory, when you see any time that it talks about glory and it talks about the shining, that is called the Shekinah or the Shekinah glory. Now in here it's still the kabod, but when the glory of the Lord comes down, the light of Jesus Christ, he begins to shine. Oh, let this little light begin to shine in this house. Lord, begin to speak to us with the sound of many waters. Lord. Let our ears hear. Let our hearts be engrafted with your word tonight that we just don't sit here and get another message. We want your glory to fill this temple. We want the alignment to come from heaven to earth and the alignment to come to the body of Jesus Christ. But Lord, we also need to come into your alignment, to come into your will and to seek your way. And so it says there uh, that the glory came from the east, uh, his voice. Somebody say, when the glory comes, say it, when the glory comes, God will speak and I will hear. And there will be a sound of many waters. Uh, And so when you're hearing the sound uh, and you said, oh man, what's going on with my hearing? Uh, Oh man, do I need to go and have my ears tested? Uh, It's like I have water in my head. I'm not talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about the spiritual waters of heaven. Uh, Healing waters. uh, Healing waters. Uh, When the glory comes, uh, healing waters will be there. Uh, He will speak uh, and somebody will receive a miracle. He will speak uh, and somebody uh, in this house tonight uh, will get a miracle that they've been seeking. Uh, He will speak uh, in the glory. So you need to get the glory. Hallelujah. It's good that there's glory and majesty uh, in the heavens uh, and we sing majesty uh, and we honor uh, heavenly Jesus uh, and we honor the heavens. uh, But it's nice when it comes down where I live. I like what Linda said on Wednesday night. She said Tony and her uh, have been uh, doing uh, the Lord's Prayer. She calls it our Father. uh, Our Father who art in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy... And I always add something. Thy will be done where I live, where I sit, uh, where I speak. uh, where I drive my vehicle, uh, where I go to the store, which isn't often, uh, when I go to the bank, uh, when I'm walking down the street, uh, may the glory, may the glory, may I walk in the glory. I want to walk in the glory. Anybody else want to walk in the glory or is that just me tonight? Uh, Maybe I just got a hold of this message. Uh, I saw something. I saw, yes, uh, it's a vision Ezekiel's having way back there. Uh, He's also looking out to the millennial time. uh, But I can have the glory right now. 
where I live. In the now. In the now. And so it says, uh, he's shown with the, the, the waters were shining. Uh, how many of you know when the sun hits the water sometimes and it just shines that beautiful shine? Uh, oh, come on, let, get a hold of this. Let the glory of God begin to shine in you and I. Shine, Jesus, shine. Shine, Jesus. Uh, that our countenance will be changed. Uh, our disposition will be changed. Uh, I, I come in this morning and I looked, uh, and, and, and it looked like a glummy people. Everybody looked like they were down. And Jack got up there and tried to do his dance and everything and get you stirred up. And, and a lot of people just did not get into the service this morning. Uh, and I thought, oh my goodness, they don't realize how great a salvation they have. They don't realize that the joy of the Lord is their strength. They don't realize that with joy shall we come rejoicing. And everlasting joy shall come upon the head of those people who begin to rejoice. Somebody in this house ought to begin to shout. Somebody in this house ought to begin to laugh. Somebody in this house ought to get a hold that when the glory of the God comes into the house, then something happens and it changes not only the atmosphere of the building, but it changes you and I. And so it said in verse 3 now, and we're moving on, and uh, this is expository tonight. Uh, and I put up above a new vision because he said, and the vision which I saw was like the other vision I saw. This is the second vision, and the first vision he had, he was by uh, River Chabar, and uh, as he was by that river, uh, the, the glory of the Lord came, and he saw a great vision of the heavens. He saw uh, uh, magnificent things happening. He saw the splendor, and he said, man, he said, I'm getting it the second time. How many of you know that sometimes you don't get it the first time? Many times it takes the two times. I'm a Johnny Pool, so uh, somebody will tell me something uh, prophetically. Three days later, I catch up with it. Some of you haven't caught it up in three years. You've got to get a hold of the thing tonight that God is pouring out His Spirit uh, and He is going to manifest His glory. Uh, he has set the plumb line and the plumb line is Jesus Christ Himself. Uh, and then He sent the Holy Spirit uh, who will teach you, lead you, guide you, uh, put you in the right direction, uh, put you in the right place. Uh, he will measure you. Uh, he will take you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Uh, he will take your heart. He will take your mind. Uh, he will take your disposition. Uh, he will take that angry look that you have. He will take all those things and he will wash you whiter than the snow. He will cleanse you and he will put the plumb line on you and righteousness and holiness will come to your body, to your mind, to your spirit, to your heart, to your disposition. I never use the word disposition. Some of these dispositions are going to change tonight. All right. Uh, and the vision which I saw was like the other vision I had seen. And oh, I came to foretell. Oh, I was sent to, to, to foretell the destruction of the city at that time. At the vision I had seen beside the river Chabar near Babylon. And I fell on my face. And the glory of the Lord. Verse 4, something is changing. Because when he saw the first vision, and it was a vision of magnificence, the splendor, and the glory of God. But in that vision, over the next several chapters through Ezekiel, he describes what he saw. And he saw the glory of the Lord lift from the house. May that not happen here. May we not get so caught up in things that we forget that we're going to be caught up in Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, help us in this Holy Spirit to be our plumb line. And now we're in verse 4. And it says... Up above it said that the glory entered in, into, well, the glory came, and he saw the glory. He beheld the glory, uh, and uh, it was a shining glory. It was the Shekinah. He had a vision. He said, I'm having another vision. And, oh, this vision so much better than that. Because in the first vision, everything was destroyed. And the glory left the temple and went to the mountaintop. But now something different is happening because... Uh, 
Everything has been remeasured. Everything has been set in plumb line. Everything has come into alignment. Whether you know it or not, you have been prepared by the Holy Spirit through prophetic words and through the Word of God and through the teaching. And you have been prepared for this very night for the glory of the Lord is going to shine upon you. And you're going to radiate, arise, and shine from the depression and the prostration where circumstances have held held you down uh, and began to radiate uh, with the glory uh, of the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Jerry complained this morning about that bright light we had back there. Uh, and uh, he said to me, he said, uh, I'm not playing my drums. He said, everything is radiating light. Uh, he said, I can't even see up there. I'm not going to play. He's sitting in the amp room back there or a TV room and he said I, I, I'm not playing my drums pastor and I said well Jerry I said maybe we can move you down we're not using the keyboard right now maybe we'll move you down here and uh, he said, well, I'm not going up there. He said, uh, my cymbals are shining, uh, and my drums are shining, uh, and everything around me is shining, uh, and I can't even see up there. Uh, and I said, Jerry, uh, maybe you ought to get some sunglasses. Uh, he said, I got them. So he went and got and put sunglasses on. We shined his head, put the sunglasses on. He said, when I grow a beard, I'll be a good drummer. <laughs> so already this morning, whether you know it or not, uh, and then you say, but the, but the light blew out. That was just one. I got more. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Sometimes the light flickers in the house but it never flickers in the heaven oh you didn't catch that uh, sometimes a light and a couple of weeks ago a prophetic word came uh, and the lights were going off and on uh, we're, we're on a three phase uh, uh, electric system here uh, and uh, uh, the lights were on in the in that area and the lights were out in the sanctuary and then the lights were on over there and then the lights came back on in the sanctuary but we had no speakers we had no power in the wall plugs and uh, uh, the light kept and all of a sudden the prophetic word comes uh, in the natural the lights will flicker but in the heavenlies uh, it will never flicker uh, how many of you know heaven has come down to earth hallelujah heaven has come down uh, and That's enough. <laughs> Anybody see it? Am I speaking the right word? The Holy Spirit's trying to show you something, uh, and uh, that may be a natural thing. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe somebody hit a pole down. The, but I'm telling you something. Uh, in the natural, God is going to pour out uh, his spiritual anointing upon you, uh, and the lights may flicker. Uh, the lights may go out uh, in the natural, uh, but they're never going to go out in the heavenlies. And heaven has kissed the earth, uh, and the glory of the Lord uh, has risen upon you. Uh, around Rise, therefore, uh, from the prostration uh, and the depression where circumstances uh, and situations and sickness uh, and disease uh, have held you down. Uh, arise uh, and uh, shine uh, with and radiate uh, with the glory of the Lord. Uh, for the glory of the Lord uh, has risen upon you, uh, and you uh, shall radiate uh, the glory of his name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. That was not part of my notes. I don't have any notes, so I guess it could be anything. And the glory of the Lord, verse 4. And the glory of the Lord. Everybody say, the glory of the Lord. He saw it by vision. He heard a voice. He heard a sound. It was like many waters. He saw the shining uh, of the glory of the Lord is shown. There was sight. Uh, there was sound. Uh, there was hearing. Uh, uh, when the glory comes, uh, God will manifest His glory in a manifest way. Hallelujah. There will be Oh, I got it again. There will be a wave of glory. And then another wave of glory. Another wave of glory. Another wave. I'm trying to stay up here tonight. Uh, I'm trying to stay here uh, because the Lord showed me this today. I said, Lord, I don't have anything. He said, just go in your Bible. I'll get you there. And he began to show me this. And man, 
This is the second Bible that I marked up. I marked up my other big one, and then Ken says, that one's so heavy to carry. So I got my amplified. Now. But then the glory of the Lord entered the temple. Everybody say, I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. The glory filled the temple back there. And there was a restoration of the glory of the Lord. In the millennial time, there will be the glory of the Lord that comes when Jesus Christ comes back again. And in the meantime, God has sent his son, and they called him Jesus. And he came to love you and heal you and forgive you. And he sent him for a reason, because we are to honor him as the glory of the Father. He is my only begotten son, the Father speaks. And so when the glory comes, his voice will speak. Man, I, I've preached this before, but I've never seen this. When the glory comes into the house, you will hear the voice of the Father. Try it over here. I'm not coming down. When the glory of the Lord enters into the house of God, you will hear the voice of our Father. You will know the presence of of Jesus Christ. He walks among the seven candlesticks in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, it says his voice was like many waters. And he speaks. Oh, Lord, speak for your servants want to hear you tonight. If you don't want to hear him, I want to hear him. So speak, Lord, for your servant wants to hear you. And the Spirit caught me up. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual thing that is happening here tonight. Uh, and the Spirit caught me up. Uh, he brought me into the inner court. Uh, and behold, when I got to the inner court, uh, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. When I came to the altar, the glory of the Lord filled the altar area. That's why I wanted you to come up and just worship a little bit tonight. Uh, I, I was setting you up uh, for this glory to come. Oh, the glory of your presence. We your people, Lord. Uh, we give you reverence tonight. We honor you, uh, and we want your glory to come. Uh, and it says, uh, by, he says, the Spirit uh, caught me up. Somebody say, Spirit. Spirit. Say it out loud. Spirit, Spirit. catch me up. I want to see the glory. I want to feel the glory. I want to know the glory. I want to walk in the glory. I want to talk to glory. I want to sleep in the glory. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, come on. Shekinah, glory. Come, glory, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Bring the glory. Put us in alignment here tonight. Uh, let the glory. And they said, uh, he brought me, he caught me up. Uh, oh, man, tonight, can we get caught up uh, in the next 15 minutes? Can we get caught up uh, in the Holy Spirit? Can we get, let the Holy Spirit come and just control where we are? We sang a little chorus this morning. It's been coming to me every now and then, and it just sort of fit this morning with a young man. Uh, Wherever you lead me. I will follow. Wherever you want me, I will go. I want your spirit, my life. Everybody say this. I want your spirit. Say it out loud. I want your spirit, my life, to control. And then to others, your love I will show. Holy Spirit, come and catch us up right now. Bring us. Listen, we can come to this altar 40 times in the natural and leave 40 times without feeling the presence of God. Or we can get caught into the Spirit and allow the Spirit to move us and come one time and feel His power, His anointing, His love, His presence, His mercy, His grace. Uh, oh, Lord, help us to get caught up. Everybody say caught up. Listen, uh, the only way you're going to be with Jesus is you're going to get caught up like John. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And the Spirit caught me up. And I had a vision of the heavenlies. Uh, God is bringing heaven right where you live. Some of you are so anxious because you're ready to do something that you think is right and you're totally wrong. 
I'm just speaking that by the Spirit now. You are about ready to do something and make a decision that you think is totally right, and you've thought about it, and you've conversed with other people, and you think that now you're ready to go and do what you think you're going to do. And I'm telling you right now by the Spirit, when you get caught up in the Spirit, you'll know you're totally out of alignment. Get back in alignment. Get back in alignment. Are you hearing me? All right. It's the Word of God, is it not? Is this the Word of God? Uh, The Spirit caught me up. And not only caught me up, He brought me in. Hallelujah! I'm being brought in to the very altar of God, the very inner court. uh, And behold, when I got there, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Somebody say, I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, say it out loud, the Holy Ghost is catching me up. He caught me. And now I'm being filled with the holy glory. The glory. Oh, the glory. I keep coming back to that. Oh, the glory of your presence. I won't sing it. Uh, And uh, I heard one speaking to me out of the temple. And uh, the man, the angel of the Lord stood there. And he, the Lord, said to me, are you ready for this? And this will be the last verse I have. Uh, And he, the Lord, said to me, son of man. Look at your neighbor and say, listen, neighbor. God is speaking right now in the glory. And here's what he's saying. Here's what he's saying. You have the amplifying up there, verse 7. This is the place of my throne. This is the place of my throne. God has chosen, not only uh, chosen uh, us for this area, but he has chosen and he has built this church and established it on top of the mountain for a reason. This will be the place of his glory. The lighthouse came down by the wind of adversity, but it's back up and shining brighter than ever. Hallelujah. Somebody say, when the temple falls, God will raise it up again. When I fall, I shall rise again. When I go down, look out, devil, I'm coming up. When I'm in the pit, look out, I'm coming to higher ground. When I am in the bed of hell, when I am in sickness, when I am in sickness, look out, devil. Come, I'm coming into healing. For the glory of the Lord is filling my temple. I am the temple. I am the temple. I am the temple. I am the temple. And he brought me into the temple. uh, And he came into my temple. uh, And when I got in the temple, the Lord said, uh, I uh, am going to make my throne right here. Uh, I am going to make my throne. uh, I'm going to be right here. uh, And not only in this natural building, uh, I'm coming to your natural body. uh, For you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. uh, And God has said, I'm coming with my glory. uh, And I'm coming on the inside uh, of this temple. And on the inside, I'm going to make and declare my throne. Quit worrying about what you were going to do and get a hold of what God's trying to do here tonight. God is trying to bring us into a place. Uh, Maybe maybe you're not getting there, but I am. I feel the glory of God. uh, And and I want to run, but I'm not going to run. I want to keep in this word. He made his throne. This is the place of my throne. Where? In the temple. Where? In the glory. Where? In my temple. Yes, heaven kissed earth and the plumb line and the righteousness and the holiness and the glory of God. His mercy, his grace is sufficient for us. And it has come down to where I live. But I'm not done yet because now he's moving from one to the other and he's touching you as a body but I'm not done yet because now he's coming not just to the body he is going to come to your personal body and as the glory comes and fills the temple the healing and strength of the Lord Jesus Christ will be in involved will it is the throne room you become Nancy would you stand please I couldn't stay up there I knew that Nancy, uh, you are the throne room of God Almighty. uh, And the throne room, the glory uh, has come back.
He's measured you. He put a plumb line on you. And now from the top of your head, he said, oh, uh, yeah, somebody uh, in the man over there is getting the glory. And Brother uh, uh, back here, uh, he's getting the glory. Brother Jeff's getting the glory. Brother Jack's getting the glory. But you are the temple of the Most High God. And you are being filled with his glory. Uh, somebody else in here feel that tonight? Could you receive what I just told Nancy? Uh, I got to get back up here. I got to stay here. Uh, and he said to me, son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet. Wherever he puts his feet, stay up here. Wherever he puts his feet, wherever he puts his feet, it belongs to him. And so if he is engrafted in your spirit, in your heart, by the Holy Spirit, wherever, oh, you get a hold of this. I'm out on a limb here. Wherever you put your feet, it belongs to you. The enemy is under my feet. Disease is under my feet. Sickness is under my feet. Jesus has told me that wherever I'm going to come and make my throne inside of you in your temple, and that is going to be the place of my throne, and when I place myself there, my feet are going to walk wherever you walk, and my feet are going to be wherever you are. It says the place of the soles of my feet, and he said, and I will dwell in the midst of you. Hallelujah. Oh, the glory. Oh, the glory of your presence. This is an engrafted word tonight. And I have taught this before, but I have never taught it in this manner. I have never seen it in this manner. And tonight, every one of you, just like I had Nancy, 80 years young and growing in Jesus, because tonight, the engrafted word of God is now in her spirit. And get a hold of this. The throne of God is in your temple. God said, I will come and dwell, live, habitate in within you. That's why this morning Jack was singing that song. He even said, Pastor, if you want to do this, come up here and stand beside me. But I wanted, he was talking about great and mighty is the Lord our God. And great and mighty is he. And that's good that I can sing great and mighty is the Lord our God. He created heaven and earth. He created the hills and the valleys and the rivers and the Cushion River and the, and, and the Tulip River, uh, Stream uh, and, and the Ohio River. He created those and that's good. And great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. But I want to know that First John 4, 4 tells me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the earth. Hallelujah. So, Jack, if you want to get your, uh, get your microphone, come up and stand beside me. We're going to sing that in a few minutes. As soon as uh, Harry helps Pastor Walt up to the uh, uh, keyboard there, I mean up to the piano. Uh, uh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Somebody say, great and mighty is the Lord our God. But greater, listen to this, this great and mighty God. See, you invited me this morning, and I refused you, but I invited you, and you came. Did I refuse? No. <laughs> you can refuse if you want to, but you're not going to, because this lesson tonight is not a lesson. It is an experience. This is not a homiletical message tonight. This is an experience. The glory of God is setting in our the throne room. Can, can you get that? Can you get a hold of that? Pastor Cindy has a throne room of God Almighty within her. Oh, you ought to respect her from now on. Huh? Yeah, you ought to have a little more respect around here for one another. Walled back there, sitting right beside her. He has the throne room of Jesus Christ, the, the throne room of our Heavenly Father. God said, the, the, the Spirit caught him up and brought him to the very inner court, brought him to the very inner place, brought him to the altar of God. And when they came to the altar of God, something happened. The glory was there, and the glory filled the temple. I think it says in King James, the glory filled the house. 
Well, you can be a house too if you want to. I don't care what you are, but I know you are a tabernacle, a tent, uh, and you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to watch a new service every Sunday evening at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Watching on Facebook, please click the like button and leave a positive comment. And please share with others. YouTube watchers, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Help spread the good news of Jesus Christ.